Hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to be analyzing my first read of the Superman comic by Mark Wade and Alex Ross, Kingdom Come. So what prompted me to read this comic? My good friend, Tete, said this was a great comic. In fact, one of the best of DC. So I had to check it out, especially since she implied it was better than Red Sun, which we both watched and reviewed back in January. Link is in the description. Now, please note that I'm just talking about my own opinions and impressions here. I'm not here to be an arbiter of what is high quality or not, and I am not a long-term DC fan, which seems to be the target audience of this work. So I may have missed a lot of information that would have made this an easier and more enjoyable read. I am merely reviewing this based on my views and my opinions. And as many of you know from my writing podcast, The Nuts and Bolts of Writing, link is in the description, I'm not someone who enjoys overly detailed plots and tons of information. Now, I love detailed characterization, especially the type that explores people's motives and their streams of consciousness. But I'm easily overwhelmed by info dumps and frequent time skips. The kinds of stories I prefer are quite minimalistic, with small casts and a limited story in the traditional sense. Think Portrait of a Lady on Fire, directed by Celine Sciamma, Philip Roth's novels, The Counterlife, and Portnoy's Complaints, and my friend Tete's historical novel, 70 Fierce Years. Link is in the bio if you want to check out Tete's 70 Fierce Years. It's a riveting tale about a man struggling to hold on to his Cossack identity after the Russian Revolution. So back to Kingdom Come. I tried to read this a few months ago, but I couldn't get past the first few pages. It felt too dense and there was too much information packed into each page. The font size and shape also didn't help. Like many 90s comics, Kingdom Come uses a very small, hard to read fonts where words are placed very closely together. So what did I like about Kingdom Come? To be honest, I only liked Alex Ross's art. However, I have to note that as beautiful as the art is, it looks extremely static, even in the fight scenes. This is strange because this is supposed to be an action comic. I didn't like how the characters seemed like posed statues or figures, even when flying or fighting. It made them seem very distant and difficult to understand and relate to. The frame story of the apocalypse, I have to admit, is quite interesting. I did like the exposition and the fights being interpreted through a bi biblical lens. However, it felt forced at times. Was there really a need to have a frame story with the pastor? Those panels and pages could have easily been spent on fleshing out Superman's motivations more since he was the meat of the story. And as we'll cover below, unfortunately, he was very one-sided and one note. Now, let's talk about what I didn't like. So there's a lot of things I did not like about this work. Actually, everything other than the art, unfortunately. So here's the breakdown of all the things I didn't like. First of all, what was the point of it? Superman going dark because he doesn't like metahumans and how they don't jive with his concept of heroism. But then, Superman never had any consequences for his inactions and actions. Despite setting up brainwashing gulags for people who don't listen to him, a la Red Sun, he gets off scot-free, pretty much. And he even ends up with Wonder Woman, even though she was disappointed in him and gave him a farewell kiss at the end. Superman is also extremely one note. He's solely defined by his angst at the beginning over Lois's death and the trial with Magog, and the fact that he doesn't care about human society anymore. And then he comes to he comes back to human society and starts lecturing the metahumans for not meeting his standards of what a hero is. I understand stubbornness has always been one of his traits but it's not explained why he's stubborn and why he's obsessed with his idea of what a hero is and forcing it on everyone through re-education camps. Without a proper explanation as to why he has such firm beliefs about why his idea 
of a hero is right and everyone else is wrong, the work falls apart. Since it feels like the writer just wanted Superman to do this because he wanted to show that Superman wasn't just a, quote, big blue boy scout. I guess this was DC's attempt at making their own version of Watchmen. In other words, this was an attempt to deconstruct the meaning of superhero and the role of superheroes and whether they're actually good. However, I don't really think this worked well for the reasons explained above. If the main focus, Superman, does not have grounded beliefs for his actions and inactions, why should we care about what he does? It just feels like a series of random events jumbled together into a so-called plot. You know, I was frustrated that this book had such good art. It almost felt like the art was used to give legitimacy to the story and characters. Next point, plot for the sake of plot. I know Superman went into self-imposed exile because of Lois's death and what happened with Magog, as explained in the graphic novel. But it's pretty convenient that Wonder Woman manages to convince him to come out of the come out of hiding again and into the world. Why did she succeed while others didn't? I think it's probably because of their previous friendship and underlying attraction to each other, but these things need to be established, not assumed. And many other things are just plot for the sake of plot and you know the connection to revelation through the Bible, especially in issue four. At the end, too many things were happening at once, like the bomb part. At that point, I just didn't care anymore. When you put too many plot points into a short story, it becomes bloated, boring, and you just don't care what happens next. This is one of the main reasons I tend to avoid works, especially works that are not long, that have too many plot points and too many characters. Often they just feel bloated and I can't get into any of the characters or the themes because everything is so thinly spread. And this is one of the works that I think fall under this category of works I'm criticizing. There was also an unemotional plot twist. The Shazam twist wasn't emotional to me. I didn't really care about it because we barely got to see Shazam. A work that just relies on nostalgia and references to other works for me isn't solid. Also, who do we root for? I don't understand who we're supposed to root for. You could argue that this is a dark, morally gray story that explores the nuances of being a superhero and good versus evil, but I didn't think it did so that well. For comparison's sake, the 2022 Batman movie did that extremely well, as I previously reviewed, link in the description. But no one is appealing in Kingdom Come, unlike 2022 Batman, where everyone is pretty appealing, you know, quote unquote good or quote unquote evil. Superman is an angry godlike figure in Kingdom Come who just judges everyone he comes across for failing to meet his standards. And we never get to understand why he has such stiff standards. We just have to go with it because that's what the author said and because comic tradition. Batman is, I don't even know what to say, but it just seems like he's there to challenge Superman's views and everyone else is too dramatic, too bombastic, and takes themselves too seriously. The dialogue also feels pretentious, purple prose in the way that there's no substance most of the time, and just a long enumeration of plot points and references that you eventually just don't care about because there's already too much happening. Finally, it's confusing. Kingdom Come is incredibly confusing, especially if you're not a longtime DC fan like myself. Tete has explained to me that many comics rely on previous knowledge, and I understand that. But I don't think that is an excuse to create a story with horrible pacing, which I think this was. The pastor part at the beginning was properly paced. However, once we get into the superheroes, the pacing becomes breakneck. And this isn't meant as a compliment. Think about it. Major plot points happen within a few panels, and there's a major time skip of 10 years after the bomb goes off. The shift was too abrupt and didn't give us enough time to absorb what had just happened. There's also minimal world building as a result of this breakneck pace. Right away, we're given a bunch of information about the meta-human society that's at, that's at once vague and highly specific. 
world will world building is important because we get to know what makes Superman hate the new society so much, but we don't see this. We only see a tiny bit, but not enough to understand why he hates the new society. The Magog part was somehow interesting and gave more background for the metahuman society, but his scene ended too quickly to have enough impact. So my final verdict for Kingdom Come is one star out of five stars. One star just for Ross's beautiful art. That's it. The story was convoluted and confusing and unenjoyable, and I couldn't get any enjoyment out of it. Comics are meant to be enjoyable, but this wasn't. So unfortunately, this does not meet my standards or my expectations. I did expect this to be more entertaining, at least, even if it was going to be confusing, which I did expect because I wasn't a longtime DC follower. But this, I would say, even though Red Sun is flawed, it was much better structured and more appealing. Every character was better constructed and better characterized than in here. And I will read the Red Sun comic and do a review just like this about it. All right, guys, thank you so much. See you next time.